Hi, I'm Molo Hadi. I'm a 30 year medical student at Virts. I was admitted via the GAM program, and yes, I wrote the web as well. And this is just going to be a brief overview of my journey into the GAM admission. I do hope that it doesn't leave you feeling empty. So as a brief overview of my, of my previous performances, I have a BSc degree in engineering from VIRTS. It's a four-year degree and my average for the last two years was 72%. My metric average was 83% and I did not go straight into medicine because I did not know better at that time. So what actually happened was I had the application form and the application form was looking for a CV and a brief motivation. So I couldn't figure out what to write in that section because I wasn't a very active person. And so my CV was basically just going to be my personal details. So I kept it, trying to figure out what to write until the applications were closed. So I had to go for something else. Um, my first degree was completed in 2012. So between 2012 and 2020, I was a full-time employee. And it was in 2018 when I decided I'm ready to do a career switch and go start from first year medicine. So as I was busy checking what people say about different medical schools in South Africa, I bumped into a blog about the GAM program. I'm ashamed to say I didn't know about it in 2018, but yes. And for me, I was very, very happy because it was like a jackpot. I, I would get to save on two years of tuition, six year tuition versus four year tuition. So I checked the qualifying criteria. I realized I meet most of that, except that I don't have first year biology. So I then applied to do the biology with VETS Plus in 2019. And it was in 2019 that I decided, you know what? I'm applying for 2020 admission. Let me die once and just write the web. If I pass, I pass. If I fail, I fail. I'll try again in 2020, you know? So over to my study method, I feel like I need some explanation to do just to, you know, make you understand why I studied the way I did and why it actually worked, why it was the best that I could do at that time. So I had a very busy schedule. Like I said, I was a full-time employee. My work hours were between 11 and 30, 13 hours a day. And I worked some Saturdays, like alternating Saturdays. And I would get called out sometimes, sometimes on Saturdays, sometimes on Sundays when I'm not at work. And as I said, I was doing biology part time. So just biology, I would attend some Mondays, actually not some Mondays, every Monday and Thursday, not every day of the week. So if out of my 24 hours a day, we take out 12 hours of an average of 12 hours at work. And then from there, sub subtract again one hour of commuting to and from work i'll take 30 minutes to go to work and 30 minutes back one hour of getting ready in the morning and my seven to eight hours of sleep we left with about two hours um yeah we just left with uh, about two hours so i hardly had any time left for cooking and just relaxing i mean i would come back tired after a 12 hour work week i would be exhausted so when i had some energy at the end of the day i would do biology because I had to pass that I mean passing the web without the biology wouldn't have meant anything to me so I kept on postponing the studying for the web until second week of July when I got the response from Vert. and then it was then that I realized I have to come up with a working plan so what I did is I printed out the objectives and I downloaded YouTube videos I downloaded, um, actually before I get here, eh, I had like two formal study sessions, if I recall very well. So the first study session was the long weekend of August 9. I wasn't working that Saturday, so I used the whole weekend to study for the web. And then the second study session, formal, formal study session, was the week of the exam. I managed to get a week off from work and I used that week. All I was doing was study, eat and sleep. That's it. So before the sessions, you know, like after getting the invitation and between the two sessions, what I did is I made use of YouTube videos. I would download them and I would listen to them on my way to work, on my way to class. I was staying an hour away from Verts, so I would drive an hour to Verts and back. So I would listen to the YouTube videos then, 
even during coffee breaks at work if they are short enough i would listen to them and i would also use khan academy they've got very very short straight to the point videos they don't use you know difficult jargon so even i without um, a background in physiology and anatomy i would be able to follow them and i would watch them during tea breaks i also downloaded anatomy and physiology apps from google play store and instead of social media i would scroll through them yes and what i did is i also took um, the advice from people who've written the web before me and i only stuck to the objectives i didn't study anything extra i was just on the objectives so as you can tell from yeah from what i've just said i i can't tell you when i started to study for the web exactly i just know it was after i got the response which was after the second week of july but in terms of how long i can't tell you and in terms of the exact date i can't tell you because i didn't have a study schedule for the web you know i was just doing it as i get time watching a video as i get time you know um searching stuff on the internet as i get time yeah so i can't really say when i i started studying for the web and when studying i always felt like it was a lot of material and yes it is a lot of material but it is doable so what helped was i was part of the amped for the web telegram group and the tutors would send you know motivational messages from time to time so that helped ease the pressure then what also helped is the pressure was I printed out the objectives and as I completed them, I would tick them off. So as I see progress, I would feel better, you know, feel like, okay, we're getting somewhere. We're not that far behind, even though we were still behind. So on the day of the exam, my pressure, I didn't have much pressure, honestly speaking. So what happened is, like I said, I managed to get a week off. The first day of the exam, I had... I think it was just a tension headache. I couldn't focus on anything. It was after five. I couldn't focus on anything and I decided, you know what? I'm just going to sleep. If I fail, I fail. I'm not even halfway done, you know, so if I fail, I fail. So I went, I slept. In the morning, I got there very early. I think I got there around half past six. I'm not sure, but the queue was still very short. I managed to do the registration. After the registration, I still had an hour left. So I went to the library. I don't even remember what I studied that morning. But yes, I went to the library, I did what I could, I came back and I just said, you know what, God, whatever happens, let it happen. I sat down and yeah, I wrote. So after writing the um, the exam, I don't know, man, I didn't think I did well and at the same time, I didn't think I did too bad. So I just didn't know how I did. I was just waiting for the results, really. But yeah, I was just waiting for the results. And on advice to future GAMPAS, I just want to say when you plan on, if you are, um, I'm going to speak to people who are working. If you are a full-time employee, when you do your planning, please do not forget your finances. And when you do your finance planning, please assume the worst case scenario. And in saying so, I'm not saying that your finances should hold you, should hold you back. What I'm saying is, just have a real picture of which sacrifices you might have to make once you're back at school. But don't let them hold you back. Make a plan when you are still working. Because once you're here, you don't want to be stressing about finances. And also just keep calm, pray about it. You know, put in the, the hours. Your mind won't disappoint you. It will do the work for you. And regardless of how ready you feel for the web, just go right at it. If you fail... It's a lesson. If you pass, oh well, it's a jackpot as well. And then also, don't compare yourself with other people. Your situation is very different, so don't absorb pressures from 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 other people. You know, you know your situation. God knows your situation. I don't think God will compare you with other people when He decides to give you that webbed pass. And also, if you feel like you are about to give up, look around you. I feel like there is always motivation around us. If you can't find it within you, then look around you. You will get motivation. And yeah, that's um, my story in less than 10 minutes. I hope there's a thing or two that you've learned from this.
Our greatest glory is never in falling, but in rising every time we fall. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel to get more videos like these. Thank you to the new subscribers, very much appreciated.